addressing your comments, criticisms, compliments, questions. What energy you bring here, I will return to you with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace, and the position of peace and neutrality. Keep in mind, no one is twisting your arm to be here, so keep that in mind. If you are going to make claims or if you are choosing to not read the terms and conditions of the comments field, well, then you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Now, I don't ever take anything personally here. I recommend that you do the same. What I'm saying in this comments video is a critique based upon using the lens of correct sentence structure communication, parse syntax grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. Keep that in mind. Everything I say is pretty much through that lens. So with that in mind, let's get to it. What is happening, folks? Welcome to another edition of Clarity and Closure, the viewers' comments. I've done quite a few of these, and the last few have been what I would call savage. But um, I'm going to update that. We're going to call it spicy. Spicy version of the clarity for the clarity and closure of the viewers' comments. Because uh, it's not really savage. Not really. That, that's kind of a goofy term to use. Anyways, I had an individual no call, no show to a workshop, meaning they sent a donation gift. The now space location that the workshop was scheduled at came and went, and they never contacted me out of consideration or anything like that. They just didn't show up. So now I have the opportunity to do this video instead. And you know, I just don't understand folks like that, especially if they contact me and say that they have technical issues. I know anything can pop up, right? Life happens. Computers go down. However, if I was doing something like this, I would make sure all my hardware and software firmware, whatever, where all my fits, all my kit was operating smoothly before, well before my appointment. That, but that's just me. That is the meticulousness that one would uh, probably have to possess in order to be successful with this grammar. This is not a half measure thing, right? You got to be full on. But I digress. I just had to get that little bitty rant out of the way. And now we can get on to the spicy comments. First one comes from member Jonathan Todd the House. And thank you for your membership, Jonathan. And they say, what's up with the usage of the lowercase M in Matthew in your correct name on the confidential contract in the video? And they're commenting on a members-only video for the closure of the communications. And this had to do with an individual from Australia, Australia that I dealt with. And this had to do with an individual from Australia that I dealt with named Craig Goody. I don't run into these folks very often. Not even maybe one a year. But this guy was a real piece of work to put it mildly. Anyways, this, this was from years and years ago, all right? And I just thought, okay, you know, it's an old video. Yes, there are mistakes in it, but I thought I would share it with the members because the members section has access to exclusive content, not available to the public. And the members, although all the members may not fit this categorization, most of the members are more generally informed than the public, right? Going into it, that's what I'm thinking. However, we run into situations like this, where someone approaches me like, what's up with the usage of the lowercase m in Matthew? 
And then they can see, oh, well, the video was published a couple of weeks ago or whatever. But really, seriously, if you look at the text of the video, you look at the title of the video, you look at the description of the video, you will find the evidence that this video was not just published or created a couple of weeks ago, but it was indeed published years ago. And the way the individual approached me. What's up? I mean, maybe it's a defect on my part. But I do think that a certain etiquette would be observed by members. In that approaching in that way. Like, this is just some general Facebook internet comments field. And you can just come up any which way you want to. Like, would this individual come up to me on the street and say that, and they don't know me? Would they come up in my face and say, what's up? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Now, they may come on in the comments field and say, well, I most certainly would. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. I wouldn't do that to somebody. I wouldn't approach someone in that manner. It's very disrespectful. In that context, right? The old school context. So, and I'm not picking on Jonathan. I'm just basically saying, folks, be aware of, of where you're at. Read the room, please. I would ask of you, be polite. This is not some uncouth, rude, casual venue. Not in the public and certainly not in the loyalist contributors members only section. So I hope this is, uh, will not happen in the future. But again, I can't really tell other people how to conduct themselves if that's how Jonathan conducts himself in day-to-day -day with the people that he knows and loves or respects or honors. Then I guess, you know, that, that's the way he conducts himself. I personally do not. Next comment comes from Greg Brown. And they say, please help. I need guidance on stopping a foreclosure and getting my live life claim done. Thanks. In cooling on it to this, I offered them my email address, right? Because my email address is at the bottom of every single video and just about every single description of every video. At the end of every video, I either say it or it's in written text. If you want to contact me, contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. The comments field is not the most appropriate place to do something like this, but it is what it is. This individual felt the need to come into the public and contact me in such a manner. Cool. So guess what, folks? They did email me. And guess what, folks? I offered them a consultation. And guess what, folks? Never heard from them again. And I'm, I'm saying this and bringing this to your attention because this is a common theme with folks like this who are going through things like this. There's just probably so much chaos in their construct right now. And I was just one of a myriad of options or choices or possibilities that they saw. And they saw it at a fleeting moment. They're like, oh, correct sentence structure, ooh. And then they contact me. And then they realize, well, it's gonna take a little bit more than effort than they were willing to put forth initially. So then they just forget about it and go on to the next thing, the next fiction thing. So it is what it is, but it, it happens more times than not. More times than I can count, this is what happens. And again, it's a perfect example of someone who's in the middle of something terrible happening to them, and then they want to learn the grammar. I understand why they'd want to learn the grammar. However, that is like the worst possible place in your life to learn it is when you're under duress like that. It's better to have it than not need it, than need it and not have it. So all you folks out there that have been watching this channel for a year, two years, three years, but have never taken a workshop, take heed. Next comment comes from Terrence Herming. And they say, I saw the Weeby Jason Glass website, the prelude, this prelude. No idea what Terrence is talking about here. English may not be their first language obviously, but I can surmise from 
the first couple words there is that they mean Weebly with the L-Y. Because I do have a Weebly website. I don't really use it anymore at all. Uh, it once it was going to be my home base, but it didn't really take off or anything. So I just use YouTube as my home base. But I'm pretty sure they mean Weebly. I don't know what they mean by prelude. No lewd. <laughs> Made me nearly cry because some of the text was underlined. So the mere fact that text was underlined made Terrence nearly cry. I, I, my heart goes out to Terrence for the sheer magnitude of, of their sensitivity. If something underlined nearly makes them cry, I, geez, I'd hate to think what would happen if one of their pets passed away or something. Geez, that's tough. From what I learned before underlining completely corrupts the text, although there is an unless, the unless in this case is if QG does allow for underlined text. Having said this, underlining is probably smart if the author does not want to be liable for their scribed sentences. Again, you know, if you go back through the history of Terence Herming's comments, they are all based in fiction. They're all based in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, fictitious conveyance of grammar. Every concept that they share is rooted in that. So that's the position they're coming from. So it's perfectly plausible why they would say something like that. Uh, because they have no closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. They have no knowledge of it, really. Um, they don't know what it's like to create a correct sentence structure contract. So it is what it is. I have given closure to the bottom line multiple times. And Terrence is more than welcome to look that up on my YouTube channel if they want to learn. So my kuleana to that is there is no unless, unless you decide to actually learn correct sentence structure. Here's one of many videos I've done in answer to folks such as yourself who are beginners and seem to give fiction jurisdiction to their grammar, which Terrence obviously does. And again, if you go back through his comments, you will also see this to be true. Next comment comes from Dharma Science Radio, and they say, I realized at least a month ago that the reason why I had not made progress in my correct sentence structure studies is because I didn't have a reliable method for determining tangibility, which is interesting because I give a reliable method for determining tangibility in my Parse playlist a completely 100% reliable method across the board. But I digress. I was using my memory and that is not so reliable. Since then, I began what I call a quantum word bank to record a con continuity of the evidence for all of the various words that I'll use or not in my contracts. And I must say that it feels very fulfilling to do so. Whenever I go into my studies and practice, I can look back and see that I've made progress, which gives me motivation and power to continue working. As always, thank you for your service. Colon Ian hyphen Dane colon space Lynn Blom, period. Well, it's always good to write things down and uh, have those lists available to you, Ian. But one thing I will share with you is that Unless you're planning on taking that list everywhere you go, whether you end up in a courtroom, foreign vessel, and dry dock, or wherever you go, um, the list is not really going to do you any good. Now, for me, in the context of what you're saying, I would say the benefit of that list is that you're looking things up and writing things down, and hopefully the repetition will stick here because here is the most important place to have that stuff when you walk through those venues because what if you're stripped of all your documents what if you're stripped of every physical thing that you have then what are you going to do 
That's why it's very important to have everything here. And the only way that happens is through repetition, constant, constant studying, constant, constant uh, testing of yourself. And of course, workshops, if you're so inclined to be serious enough to take one. But great idea, and I hope it helps you. Thank you for the comment and for the membership. Next comment comes from Gypsy I Love You. And they say, I appreciate your teachings and would like to learn correct communication with you. And of course, as you can probably surmise, I corresponded with Kuliana to the effect of sharing my email address. And whether this individual actually contacted me or not, I have no idea. Uh, because I'm sure if they did, they did not use the nom de guerre gypsy, I love you. But anyways, welcome aboard, Gypsy. I love you, and I wish you well in all of your endeavors. Another comment from Dharma Science Radio, and they say, Wow, that finite mean of the surf is quite insightful. About the psychology and mind state for some, the human beings David Wimbiller worked with. About the psychology and mind state for some, the human beings David Wimbiller worked with. I think they mean of the human beings. Okay. That 1% of the 1% group. Thanks for sharing. Well, you're very welcome. And that closure of the meaning of the word surf is directly reflective of David Wynn Miller's mind state. With correct sentence structure, we do not make claims for others. If you're to do it with correctness, so we can't really, I mean, we can get an idea, perhaps, like you're saying, just insight into it. But quite practically, in reality, it's only reflective of David Wynn Miller's mindset. Now, a lot of people may not want to uh, think about that. That might make them uncomfortable. But here's the thing. When, when, when you say the 1% of the 1% group, I feel like you mean like the Rothschilds, the elite, the Rockefellers, the Royals, the what, whatever you want to call them, the Illuminati, the Swedes, the Swissies, I mean the Swissies. Shout out Dr. Haras. When I say the 1% of the 1%, I don't mean that at all. When I say the 1% of the 1%, I mean those folks who actually will take workshops, will actually invest something in this to learn it and be correct. That's the 1% of the 1%. Because very few people actually do that. Very few people make the sacrifices necessary to get closure on this grammar to be successful. Very, very, very few. That's what I mean when I say 1% of the 1%. I don't mean in terms of wealth or power or control. I mean in terms of grammar knowledge. Thank you for the comment. Next comment comes from Quadruple A, and they say, Hi, Jason. Regarding two postage stamps in the Netherlands, it is possible to order custom postage stamps with the value of one, whatever that symbol is, minus. My thought on customized postage stamps would be that it adds, I think they need another D in the ads there, to the authorship and authenticity of the document. What do they mean by it adds to the authorship? The authorship just basically means you're the author. So I, mean, I guess if you add a postage stamp, well, yeah, and you're the author of the postage stamp, well, I guess you're right. Uh, due to your own authentic customization, what kind of customization would you apply to a custom postage stamp? And what do you say in general about customized postage stamp to be used on QG documents? Uh, for the first question, what kind of customization would you apply to a custom postage stamp? If you look at this very video and you look in the upper starboard side corner of the video. So that answers that question. And your next question is, what do you say in general about a customized postage stamp to be used on QG documents? I say whatever you want to do. Whatever floats your boat. I don't think a document with your own customized stamp has any more weight 
than a document with a red fox stamp. Unless your stamp is also backed by gold, like the red fox stamp is. Now, if you're talking regular stamps based on fiat currency, those $1 stamps would hold no more weight, no more or less weight than your stamp. But again, the value of something is what you put into it. So if you think that your own customized stamp holds more value than a stamp created by the postal system, then that's your value that you apply to it. It may not be the same value I apply to it. Bottom line, you put postage on it. If it moves through the system, then it has served its purpose. If it doesn't, then it hasn't, and it's useless. That's the way I look at it. Everything from a practical standpoint. Next comment comes from user hyphen blah, blah, blah. And they say, good now space, Jason Matthew Glass. Oh my goodness, another person who misspells my name. Thanks for that, user. <laughs> I am struck by your speaking voice in only a few videos. Ooh, I apologize if my speaking voice struck you. I hope you were not hurt or harmed in any way. It's not my volition for my speaking voice to strike anybody, quite frankly. In these videos, your voice is very relaxed, perhaps even tired. Ah, now this individual is investing their own personal perceptions and projections onto me. Interesting. That's what we all do, by the way, folks. We all do that. To me, this is when your voice sounds similar to Rod Ster Serling of the Twilight Zone. All right. And then they leave a link, and then they say, For chits and giggles, when I find or watch another Serling voice video by you, I'm happy to forward it to you as continues to the evidence of my claim. Be well, Tony. Uh, I mean, The Twilight Zone, I did enjoy that show when I was a child. Um, but other than that, at this point in my life, um, I can take it or leave it. But I appreciate your observations. Thanks for the comment. Final set of comments comes from longtime viewer Terrence Herming and they say I discovered in banking if you want to write a letter to a bank you never say I you or me you only say we our or us this is the banking code this way you are the bank There's a reason why I read it that way, folks. So then I respond, I say, in the fiction, you can write a letter however you want. Correct sentence structure is a completely different domain. And then Terrence says, yes, thanks. I only mentioned aforesaid because you said you were being screwed over at one point, exclamation point. And then I said, please include a timestamp as to where in this video I mentioned that I was being screwed over within the context of banking because I don't recall saying anything about banks or banking. Thank you. Now, folks, if you're a longtime viewer of this channel, you know that it's a very specific, precise channel. And I'm very attentive to when people say that I said something or meant something. If you're basically speaking for me, thinking that I said this, that, or the third, and I don't remember it, I'm going to call you to the carpet on it. You're going to have to show me evidence. Because in the video that they're talking about, I don't remember man mentioning banking at all, quite frankly. But then again, I don't uh, remember mentioning being screwed over either. Now, I'm getting old. My memory could be going for sure. But I certainly didn't mention anything about banking, I don't think. Again, I could be wrong. That's why I'm asking Terrence to give me closure on what they're saying. Terrence. <laughs> Terrence went on to say that they didn't mean banking, that they weren't talking about banking, that it could perhaps apply to banking. Now, 
I responded to that by saying, you literally said, and I quote, I discovered in banking a letter to a bank. This is the banking code. You are the bank. They literally told me that they weren't talking about banking, that it could perhaps be applied to banking, but they never said banking. And I just showed right here, yes, yes, you did say bank and banking several times. Well, guess what, folks? Terrence deleted the comment where he said that. That's why you don't see it here, unfortunately. And that's what usually happens with, with folks like this. And uh, they didn't provide continuance of the evidence. And this isn't some casual comments field. If you say something, you must stand behind it or vacate. Just like the fiction. The fiction vacates. The fiction deletes comments. Just like Terrence. So that's what usually happens to folks like this who are on the fringes. They've been here for a while, but they show no interest in learning correct sentence structure. They just come on here to say whatever they're going to say and then try and argue with me about something when I call them to the carpet to prove what they say. And then they'll go on when they're put on the spot. When I nail them to the wall and put them on the spot, then they delete their comments. So I've about have it, had it with this fellow. Uh, they're not serious about this grammar. I really don't know why they're here. They can continue to watch the videos all they want to. However, I do not have to continue to read the uh, content that they post in the comments field because they're basically a troll at this point. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.